am Rajesh. Uh, my father, along with his, along with my cousins, started a stone crushing unit in Bangalore. As the city develops, the quarrying activities come to an end. So we were finding it very difficult to get raw material, and the raw material was being sourced for a few years from. 30 to 40 kilometers away in Devanali, Chikbalapur, etc. And with the aggregate markets being cyclic and very bad, we couldn't really operate. So that is when we thought of utilizing our plant to crush concrete from the CND debris which is lying all around our place. We have approximately 3 acres of land that is industrially converted with all statu statutory compliance with MSW rules 2000 and the pollution control board. What the process involved is, see we first receive the se uh, uh, segregated waste and how much of effort they, they put in to segregate the waste at site. It is rarely that we get uh, uh, segregated waste that can be directly dumped into the hopper for processing. So uh, the standard procedure is whatever waste comes is first dumped in the stacking yard for segregation to remove uh, soil and uh, then probably sometimes long rebars which could damage the equipment and a whole lot of plastic which in which would be found inside the waste. Cement bags, cement bags, use safety boots, safety jacket, wrappings from all the electrical conduits, etc. All, all kind of plastic waste, and that is the biggest cost. cost. The cost, the thing is, suppose a truck weighs 10 tons, the total plastic content may not be more than 10 kgs, but the 10 kg plastic would be voluminously huge to create that entire material unusable unless it is remote. After putting it in the stacking yard and you segregating, have to do hand picking. a certain amount of hand picking is required. Without certain amount of hand picking, it becomes economically unviable. See, for each of the, the wide variety of waste that comes in construction waste, and when we talk about construction waste, we need to, uh, CND waste, we need to slightly differentiate between demolition waste and construction waste. Demolition waste is fairly segregated because it happens in a systematic way where demolition of brick, where the doors, windows, etc. are taken away, then the walls are broken, then subsequently the concrete is broken to recover the rebars. But whereas the construction waste that comes in has everything put in right from cement, mortar, broken blocks to the plastic and wood, the shuttering waste, everything put in. So there is a lot of effort required in cleaning up the construction waste before it can be sent for processing. segregated and cleaned and sized CND waste which is dumped into the hopper is fed to this primary crusher using the vibrating grizzly and this crusher the motor required is about 150 HP this could reduce could take a feed of approximately 500 mm which translates to about 2 feet by 2 feet and this would crush it and bring it down to below 8 inches or about 200 mm. This is conveyed through this conveyor to the next screening station where there is a grizzly screen which separates out the minus 150 mm and the plus 150 mm to two separate crushing units. On top we also have the magnetic separator which picks out all the tramp iron, small rebars, binding wires and the nails etc. damage the further secondary crushing. And by segregation it is mostly manual hand picking of large plastic and large plywoods etc. 
and some of the odd size concrete blocks are again broken so that it meets the feed criteria of below 500 mm and it's rarely that we get to directly unload the incoming CND waste directly into the this hopper for further process and even after two rounds of cleaning you could still find some wood plastics and some clay tiles etc which are of very small quantity by weight in the final stages affect the marketability of the end product.